These surgical techniques can make noses smaller, larger, shorter, longer, more defined, narrower, wider, straighter, and unfortunately, sometimes worse. If additional uniquely sized and shaped pieces of cartilage are needed for your nasal surgery, the cartilage can be taken from your nose, ear, or a rib if needed. Additional bone, if needed, can be removed from your nose or from the superficial layer of bone in your skull. The excess cartilage removed from your nose during rhinoplasty can be utilized as grafting material or additional cartilage can be removed from the septum inside your nose as depicted here. If needed, especially in revisional surgery, additional cartilage to place in your nose can be removed from a portion of your ear shown here or even a rib. In some cases, if extra material or volume is required, there are a variety of synthetic materials that can be utilized. These are examples of synthetic preformed silastic prosthesis that are frequently used to provide augmentation to the dorsal area. There are other sizes and shapes available than what is shown here. The additional risks of these implants will be discussed. To perform this operation on your nose, the surgeon has to have exposure and visibility of these anatomic areas in order to change them. Two different surgical approaches can generally be utilized. Sometimes incisions are made inside the nose only. This is called a closed approach. Sometimes an incision is made outside the nose as well in the flesh between the nostrils to allow even more exposure as the skin is lifted up away from the underlying nasal structures. This is called the open approach. The trade-offs and advantages of each approach are debated and somewhat controversial. Most surgeons probably will utilize either technique when appropriate. Some surgeons feel they can accomplish everything without having to place a scar on the outside of the nose and that the open approach causes more swelling. Others feel the scar is a non-issue and the advantages of doing it open are that there can be much more precision, especially with nasal tip work, and that the better exposure of the tip structures lead to better results. The truth is that you can have a good or bad result with either technique and it probably has more to do with your unique anatomic problem, the skill of your surgeon, and the variable healing period. The decision should be based on your unique needs and the comfort level of your surgeon. Be sure to discuss this with them. One of the most important determining factors affecting the chances of a good result is the variability in thickness of skin on the nose. The thickness of the skin on your nose cannot be changed. This is a helpful way of understanding the contribution of the thickness of your skin to your surgical result. In this picture on top, you can see a thin sheet over a chair with a basketball in it. The cloth represents skin and the basketball represents underlying structures in the nose such as cartilage. You can tell there is a basketball underneath the cloth in the top photo and when it is removed, it is readily apparent in the photo on the bottom. The next photo is of the same chair and basketball although now it is covered by a thicker blanket. You cannot identify the basketball while it is in the chair on the top photo or appreciate that it has been removed in the photo on the bottom. Thus, for patients with very thin skin, usually any change that is made in the underlying structures is readily apparent through the skin. These patients can enjoy the visibility of very well-defined sculpted structures of their nose. The downside is that any flaw or irregularity is also visible. For those with thicker skin, your surgeon's efforts might never be seen to the degree you hoped for. Usually there is some improvement, but not as much as you would like. Most people have nasal skin which falls somewhere in between very thin and very thick. You should ask your plastic surgeon about your unique skin quality. Just as there are countless variations in how noses differ from person to person, there are many variations in techniques utilized by thousands of surgeons. Maybe more than any surgical procedure, nasal surgery is like an art form. Although there are many so-called standard techniques to change specific parts of the nose, there is certainly room for the surgeon's own artistic freedom of style and modifications. There's probably more room for creativity among surgeons in design and execution of nasal surgery than in other plastic surgical procedures. An innate artistic sense is important, as well as a sense of proportion and balance. Experience performing these procedures is also probably more important in rhinoplasty than some of the other plastic surgical procedures. After the surgeon has performed the procedure, a long healing period follows. The variable degree of healing can dramatically influence the end result and is not under the control of your doctor. 
This variable healing pattern of each person also influences the overall result of rhinoplasty more than most other plastic surgical procedures. These considerations also make revisional rhinoplasty surgery uniquely more unpredictable compared to other plastic surgery operations. This is a demonstration that is helpful in understanding the visible process of healing in your nose following surgery. After your surgery, your nose will be swollen. The shirt sleeve represents skin on the nose that is swollen. The watch underneath the sleeve represents the underlying structures that have been visibly changed. As the swelling goes down, the watch or underlying nasal structures become apparent. The swelling goes down more and more each month and the overlying skin contracts until finally you are able to see the detail of the end result. The extent and period of time that the nose is swollen is variable, but usually it takes roughly one year to see a final result. Techniques and timing are variable among surgeons. However, generally, the nasal splint or cast, if one was placed, is removed approximately a week after the operation, and the nose is very swollen. On the right is a picture of a patient one week after surgery, after the splint has been removed with obvious swelling and bruising. The before picture is on the left. This patient had her nasal bones broken and a lot of tip work which caused additional swelling and bruising. This picture is a fair representation of what a patient may look like a week after an extensive nasal surgery. Most patients will see a positive change in their nose but might be unhappy with the size because of the swelling. You need to be reassured that this is swelling and the appearance will ultimately improve as the swelling slowly goes away. The majority of the swelling may go down over the next several months. However, all the swelling hiding in the subtle changes of the nose usually takes about a year. Often, patients will continue to notice changes and further subtle reduction in size over several years. Usually, during that first year, others are not able to recognize the swelling in your nose. Many nasal surgeries are revisional nasal surgeries, or operations to attempt to correct problems from a previous surgery. It is very important to know that each subsequent operation generally becomes more difficult, more unpredictable, and more risky. One of the other significant problems associated with revisional nasal surgery is the unpredictable and excessive buildup of scar tissue. Multiple surgeries can result in the compounding or building up of scar tissue on top of scar tissue. This can lead to excessive thickness, volume, and permanent deformities, which ultimately may not be correctable. The line between truly needing a revisional surgery and taking that risk and just wanting a revisional surgery should be clear. Sometimes the degree of precision desired by the patient is simply not obtainable from modern plastic surgery techniques. Chasing perfection in the best hands can lead to results that sometimes leave a patient wishing they would have stayed put with what they had. Be sure to obtain multiple and thorough consultations with surgeons experienced in rhinoplasty prior to scheduling a revision. Most doctors will tell you to wait at least one year after the initial surgery prior to having a revision. This is an important and valuable bit of advice which requires a lot of patience on the part of the patient. If the swelling has not gone down completely prior to the revisional surgery being performed, it is very difficult for the surgeon to gauge the amount of correction which is needed. It is difficult to clearly differentiate between the extent of the deformity and the swelling. Thus, overcorrection can be the end result of a lack of patience and an eagerly timed early revision. Let's talk a little about the functional aspect of nasal surgery involving nasal airway obstruction and difficulty breathing. There are several areas in the nose that can restrict airflow on its way from the nose to the lungs. These areas can be affected by nasal surgery. First, the nostrils must be large enough to allow airflow and maintain enough support to stay open when breathing in. Poor surgical planning could lead to instability of this area which can adversely affect breathing. Procedures are also available to improve these types of problems should they exist. Inside the nose, the nasal septum is a plate of cartilage that divides the internal nose into the right and left half. This cartilaginous partition, as shown in yellow in this graphic, divides and funnels the airflow from each nostril separately into the back of the nose and throat. If the septum is sufficiently deviated, it can obstruct and limit the airflow. Correction of this deviated septum by either straightening it or removing the obstructing portion of it can improve airflow. 
Often, a crooked septum is associated with a crooked nose and must be straightened to achieve a straightened nose. Opposite of the septum on the walls on each side of the inside of the nose are projecting structures called turbinates, which have the ability to expand and contract. They are highlighted in red in this graphic. There are generally three on each side, and excessive engorgement, usually of the lower turbinate, can contribute also to reduced airflow through the nose. Nasal sprays and decongestants are usually effective in pharmaceutically reducing their size and negative influence on airflow. Surgical reduction or repositioning called outfracture of the turbinates can also improve airflow of the appropriate patient. Another area inside the nose which is important for airflow is called the internal valve area. Excessive narrowness of the internal nose or lack of support with inspiration can adversely affect the flow of air through the nose. Surgical modification which causes excessive narrowness of the nose, particularly in patients who have relatively small nasal bones when compared to the length of their nose, are at risk. Sometimes treatment involving the placement of cartilage grafts called spreader grafts can improve deficiencies in this valve. If you are watching this video, you may have already considered the alternatives to having surgery to change the appearance of your nose or to improve your breathing. In most cases, this surgery is elective and you do not have to have the procedure and be subjected to the risks. You should consult with your doctor about available alternatives other than a surgical procedure on your nose. Breathing may be able to be improved with oral medications such as decongestants, antihistamines, various allergy medications, or nasal sprays. External appliances are available for some specific structural problems. Each year, thousands of patients undergo rhinoplasty without complications. It is a commonly performed surgery and generally safe for select patients. However, complications can and do occur. The rate of complications vary greatly depending on many variables, including the skill and experience of the surgeon, tissue qualities of the patient, their compliance to post-operative orders, and the variability and unpredictability of healing, among others. Fortunately, the more severe complications are the rarest.